Hey YouTubers, what's going on? Hello today. This is kind of a special um, update that I want to do. Final update. Um, folks have suggested it, but we thought of it before you suggested it that um, maybe Jeff and I get together. Um, and so, you want to say hello, Jeff? Hey everybody. Here we are together. Here I am. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. Well, what I was going to say is this, because I know at least one of you people are thinking it. No, this is not my gay lover. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know. Oh, that is funny. You know there's at least one of you motherfuckers out there thinking that, that shit. You funny. know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my God. Well, I didn't want to address that, but I was going to do the talk about the whole Danny DeVito Arnold Schwarzenegger twins. Oh shit! Thing. I know. Let me stand up here. Yeah, shit! Check it, out. check it out. <laughs> so you just guys just take it wherever you want. Go ahead. So okay. <laughs> well, the best. So you know, so much for my dignified. Uh, <laughs> God. You know, I was gonna say, hey, here I am. Uh, you know, uh, something's wrong with this picture. I'm here behind the uh, vinyl reliquary here, and uh, you thought, God, what happened to Derek? He looks like hell. <laughs> so anyway, you're killing me. I'm just gonna. I just grabbed some stuff. I'm just gonna go through it real quick, and. Um, and I'll go through it after you. Yes, you're done please. Showing them. Yes, and uh, so here's stuff that Derek's seen. I'm just gonna show these. Uh, British band Stray kind of have their their feet in uh, prog and a little bit of bluesy like a lot of British bands did and uh, I was real lucky to find both of these at the same time mm -hmm. and I hope Derek will jump in anytime and uh, you know elaborate here's another other another of their albums Stray so yeah these are just bombs these are awesome like I said, I'm gonna hand them to Derek. Yeah, and these are sweet. Um, here's a band I like a lot, Groundhogs. Who we'll save the world? The world. Um, T.S. McPhee. T.S. McPhee. Great, great British blues. And uh, those of you that weren't around in the '60s and '70s, <clears throat> all of this great graphics that they used to do. This like a comic mm. book thing. Awesome. Sweet stuff. Is that United Artists? I'll, I'll let you know. I was just noticing this is on that fantastic transatlantic. Yeah, level. yeah. So here's uh, yeah. Spooky Tooth Witness. Gary Wright was in the band. Uh, and I'm trying to think of the name of the, the vocalist. Harrison. I've got like two solo albums by him, and uh, I'm just not remembering. But great, great stuff here. I always like that cover a lot. Yeah. So, I'll let Mr. Higgins check that out. The band Arch. Oh, they did? Yeah, Mike Kelly, Jones. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Dutch band, we both like Super Sister. Present from Nancy. I don't know if I've shown this before or not, but it, it bears uh, repeating here. Kind of a, a light prog jazz. Uh, Hatfield in the North, kind of a I've little. I've always saw them as the, as the Dutch soft machine myself. There you go. That's that's a nice analogy. Here's putting a gistron by them. I always thought this yeah, part was cool. They're kind of playing there with like a little performance art or something. This is a great album. I'll have to show mine. You like a gateful or something? Mine's not a gateful, but just in general, I have all of them. Just, you know, it should show them some. Oh, yeah. Here's a band you don't really see or hear a lot about, uh, Tirnanog, Strong in the Sun. Very acoustic, maybe kind of like uh, Amazing Blondell a little bit. This is a promotional copy. So, oh, I've got some nice stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a band yeah. that I, yeah, Derek turned me on to, Skin Alley. Got this on eBay, I like down here it says, for library use only. Used cool. to be. Matthew Fisher produces. Oh, cool. Matthew Fisher from Purple Hair. So, I always thought that was a really cool two quid deal. He's holding the cheese there. <laughs> and this is guy. on Stacks. That's so cool. Which is really cool. Yeah. 
trying to get some white folks going on the label. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, Skin Tight by Skin Alley. Can't really see it. It's got a, the band uh, projection superimposed on this naked girl. Kind of a la Stasha Hawkwind. Also on stacks. You can kind of see there. Nice. <clears throat> oh, so anyway, I was late getting here because I went down to an aquarium. Yeah, look what I found. Wow. It's like, are you shitting me? Just sitting there? Wow. Best of Pearls Before Swine and Baklava. Uh, Tom Rapp um, had this awesome band, Pearls Before Swine. Kind of a uh, hippie psych folk thing. Um, if you're familiar with uh, This Mortal Coil, they do a song called The Jeweler. That's a Pearls Before Swine song. So he always liked to use these Hieronymus Bosch covers. So, that, so, so I don't know if you knew this about Thomas Rapp, but Thomas Rapp was regarded at the time, but he couldn't get signed because of his lisp. Yeah, and, he, and what's funny is I listened to him for years and then one day I just noticed this lisp, so, but. Yeah. Yeah. And he was on ESP Records. ESP. Yeah, which was kind of an esoteric label. So. Sweet. Yeah. So okay, I'm gonna bow out. Give the, give the comp to Mr. Higgins. Where so. are we at? Well, how many time we got? About six minutes on there. So sure. we'll just go a sure. little bit longer here. So how's this going, folks? Isn't this kind of fun? Uh, 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 double whammy at you. So I'm just gonna do a quick vinyl update. Um, I'll start with I just pulled this out, showing Jeff. Banana Moon, he had shown his gong, and um, this is an original uh, Banana Moon. Um, so I was just showing that to him, and I'll just trot this out right quick. And there's the inside where they're smoking the banana. Um, Jeff was very kind and brought brought me a copy of Kevin Coyne's uh, Marjorie Razorblade. I've got three of his other albums, but uh, really happy to have this one, specifically because it's a very early Reg Virgin Records release. So I was really happy to get that. Um, just picked this up today, used, I was so happy to find this, oh, yeah. Black Sabbath, Paranoid, it's, yes, it's a NEMS reissue, yeah, 180 gram vinyl, I'm really happy to find that, um, I also picked up, uh, All right. my first copy, I've never owned this album, <laughs> Great record. Black Sabbath, the Wizard. It's, a, it's a reissue, and, oh, red vinyl, very nice, now, I, I, I just realized that um, maybe some of you guys think I'm kind of geeky because I always show you the red vi the vinyl when it's colored. But I really like colored vinyl and I do like showing it. So I'm gonna keep showing it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> some other records I bought this week, um, Blood Rock, Whirlwind Tons, and this is a good album. I've listened to it all the way through now. And um, it's pretty prog for them. I picked up a copy of The Point by Nelson. Uh, it's got the laminated booklet inside as well. I was really happy to find this. Data Bank A. And I took a chance on this because of the label, Lovely Art. Uh, I believe this is a Canadian label associated with early um, synth, and, um, goth synth. And I've only listened to a couple songs. This sounds like it's gonna have some good things on it. A band that Jeff and I both love, and it's another one where I used to own it, sold it, and glad to get it back. Mark Allman, 73. I was playing this the other the, last night. Lonely Girl? Oh, hell. That sounds, they're just so easy to listen yeah, to. Yeah, and talk about setting up a nice vibe in the house. Yeah. Yeah, it's just some taste. I was going to, if I can interrupt, kind of yeah. touch upon the Nielsen, the point. Yeah. Um, do you remember when it came out around 1972 or 73, it was actually a cartoon yeah. he was on network tv right had a song me and my arrow. Yeah, my arrow yeah his dog was arrow yeah and i didn't know this until just recently yeah you see he lived in the land of point and nielsen got that do you know where nielsen got that idea i don't remember he was doing acid and all the trees came to this point that's i just recently cool. read that but that's a great record that's a very great and i just listened to one side last night i just showed this but i just recently picked this up blues magoos electric comic book i'm gonna go um kind of faster oh i found this was happy to find this johannes schmeling and this is a release on the Erdenklang label 
he was in Tangerine Dream uh, for a while. And this label was started by um, the guy, the leader of um, Ela Craig, the band. I can't think of his name right now. So this is good. This is a good label too. Yeah, when you find this label, grab it. I uh, was really glad to find oh. Meredith Monk's Dolman music. This woman is. It's some deep stuff. It's not an easy listen, but she'll take you places. This is something I took a chance on, and I'm glad I did. It's a man named Hugh Featherstone Blith Largo, and I just saw this, and um, I've never seen that. Yeah, I had never seen it either, Jeff. And um, I, I went over to uh, Canesville, which I, I seldom do, and it was just in the regulars, and it was like four bucks. Caught my attention, and I said, I don't usually buy stuff like this, but I think this is good, and this is good. Singer songwriter, this is really good. What's the and, label? Uh, it's a small label I've never heard of before, and I believe it's out of a, a German pressing, German import. I was real pleased to find a good shaped copy of this Lee Michaels album. This is really good. Uh, un unfortunately, it turns out there is a slight um, warp that you can hear. But um, other than the drum solo, which is way too long in here, this is a dynamite <laughs> album. You know, as I was listening to it, it reminded me of back in the day when people were starting oh, to emerge from the you know, the euphoria of the original love of rock and roll and drums and solos. And it's like, oh God, do we have to hear another drum solo? <laughs> it's got Stormy Monday on it. Yes. Yeah. That was the big thing. You go to the concert yep. and these 20 minute drum, drum solos. Drum solos forever. Yeah. Found another Jacques Brel. Cool. Now what I like about Jacques Brel is this, is I don't speak French, but I took it all through high school. So I have enough of an understanding that I can catch you know, like the wind. I mean, I can really tell that he's Jacques Brel. He's singing these songs and on one level, it sounds like it's just a nice song, but you can tell he is ripping somebody a new ass. <laughs> <laughs> In French. In French, and it's just awesome. Found oh. this. Yeah. Yeah. The Zodiac Cosmic Sounds. I've been trying to find um, Mort Garson's electronic music uh, stuff. And he collaborated on this with Cyrus Fariar. Um, words and Paul Beaver uh, synthesizers. This is real cool. Really, That's Beaver and Krauss. Paul Beaver from Beaver and oh, Krauss. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I found another one of the series of the Zodiac albums. I would like to get all these back. This is Aquarius. I've only got maybe two or three of them now. But again, these were all musically realized electronically by Mort Garson, and they're a hoot. You listen to the descriptions of. Your boss will be in this moon and stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't know who this is, so if someone can tell me who it is, I'm glad I bought it. It's some kind of emo band. Uh, they might even be local from Nebraska. And it turns out this is really good. I won't listen to one side, but it's like, uh, no, this isn't bad. This is good. These guys made this pressing like this for a good reason. This record is really good. I have no idea who it is. Huh. Yeah. Um, used to have this, and so oh. I had to get this back. Illusion. I just showed that today. Cool. Out of the Mist with Jane Rell. Listen to the first half of this, and I'm so glad I got it back. Good music. Something I spent full price for. I was looking for Bardo Pond. Didn't find it, but found this Murkoff album instead. And. Um, um, was in a part of an aquarium I don't usually look because I just figure it's mostly punk. But this is an ambient, minimal, electronic wonder. It's a three album set. This is like music from another uh, dimension. Cool. I, I was really, really pleased to find that. A couple more things because we're at the 14 minute mark. Another, um, you saw Jeff um, show that he got two of these in his other video. Well, he gave the double to me. I'm very happy to get this. My favorite part of this is Black Juju by Alice Cooper. <laughs> um, I got another Blood Rock Live. Um, one of my favorites, one of the earliest rock bands that I saw in concert as a child, 13 or 14 I saw them. They blew my mind and they're just a great album, great band. Once again, talk about Synergy. Jeff was just talking about this record and I found a copy for like dirt cheap. That's a great record. This is a great God. record. And this song, Broken English, which has been covered by many people, for very good reason. It's like sometimes you'll just have the blessing that a song 
comes to you. You get to write it. And it's just one of those songs. It's, it's a moment in time. Yeah. Yeah, that's and she does a great version of Working Class Hero, John Lennon song. On here. Yeah. I haven't even got and to And there's it yet. a song on here called Why'd You Do It? Mm -hmm. Which we used to not be able to play in the store. Is that right? Yeah. Because you want to talk about a spurned lover. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So about this, Bob Seeger system, um, it's a reissue. I got it for I think a buck fifty, but it's in pristine condition, and I've always loved this cover. And I would say this is the closest thing Bob's done to something that could be considered psychedelic or near near psychedelic. It's actually pretty garagey and rocking. Um, got this Barclay James Harvest. Uh, I think it's a German import, and uh, this is a good album. But I like this band anyway. Let's see, I'll show. Just one more. We'll stop here. Uh, one more Nilsson album. Ariel. It starts off with everybody's talking, you know. What? Wow. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, one, um. One of Paul McCartney's favorite songwriters. Absolutely. So, um, I'll kind of move over, Jeff, if you want to kind of get in the picture and we'll okay. kind of sign off together here. <laughs> this has really been fun. And I was going to say, I was hoping. He was going to give me a uh, phone book to sit on, <laughs> but I'm standing on it. So, and uh, this is why they don't talk. He's we standing. don't. We don't talk about the accident that ruined my NBA career, and <laughs> it's too painful to talk. About, so. oh, anyway, so keep the vinyl spinning. Peace. Peace. This has been fun.